All right, um, I think we can get started. Please take your seats and... Nothing compares to fresh to brew coffee in the morning, right? <laughs> Something awakening. All right, um, unless you have any immediate questions about opets, which I believe you have an idea as to what it is all about. And uh, by the way, Fatma, yes, please circulate this attendance. And would you please uh, put down two signatures, one for the first R and the second for this R. And your signatures will count and will be counted by my assistant at the end of the semester and will constitute some 15, 20% of your overall grade. So I want you all to attend. And um, indeed, maybe we should not be taking attendance, but when I don't take attendance, my students tell me to take attendance because they want their attendance being present here be counted because some students have the habit of not coming to class at least regularly and therefore those who come to class want to make a difference. So I think it is uh, better to take attendance to be on the safe side and, and in some cases at the end of the semester some students complain for having lesser grade than they would be expecting and when we make a check and sort of go over the uh, sort of uh, numbers of hours he or she may have attended we see that that particular student may have missed a lot of classes so therefore if you miss a class it will not be only a low number of attendance but also you will be missing discussions here which in my opinion <coughs> will be the best way to get prepared for the written exam. So um, midterm exam, uh, final exam, I ask questions about subjects that of course are in the syllabus that we are supposed to cover and also discuss in the classroom. So, all right, please take this. We have enough number of seats here, unlike the other office. All right. So um, now I'm going to talk about simulation, the other requirement. And um, I mentioned a little bit, the simulation is actually something that is being now professionally, and not only at schools, but also in some institutions, government agencies, government officials also go through simulations because simulation is a way of getting prepared for all contingencies, all possible scenarios. And not in real uh, conditions, in simulated conditions where you can control uh, pretty much the, the, the circumstances. Uh, especially these kind of simulations are carried out by uh, institutions. As I said, uh, these could be um, some government agencies, uh, diplomatic uh, offices, etc before or in the ahead of time uh, when there is a big conference where there will be issues that will be debated by and large with the participation of other actors, other countries. So um, in order to have an opinion as to what are the likely circumstances that may arise, that may emerge, and what kind of uh, uh, measures that need to be taken beforehand so as to be ready for any possible uh, sort of developments and so as not to be uh, facing some surprises, not to be caught with surprises. So uh, therefore simulation is something serious. And as I said last time on Tuesday, I myself uh, have participated in a number of sim simulations, but one important, uh, uh, an important one was uh, back in March 2001, almost 10 years ago, on the occasion of a simulation uh, put together by NATO with respect to, uh, that was a NATO Advanced Research Workshop uh, in order to discuss uh, different uh, ways and means of uh, making the Biological Weapons Convention more effective because it, it is lacking a, a verif verification mechanism. It is still lacking. Um, there are certain uh, problems in front of uh, coming up with a full-fledged verification mechanism and problems are mostly political as well as economic and financial. 
Uh, anyway, so s therefore, simulation is something real, something serious, and something quite useful, and it's being applied in many fashions in different institutions, and there are also some uh, educational institutions such as universities which have specific departments which arrange, organize simulations. For instance, just uh, uh, last May this year, there was uh, one of the biggest uh, conferences which is held every five year in five year intervals. Um, the the rev uh, review conference of the Treaty on the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons. I mean, the, the, the treaty which aims at stopping the spread of nuclear weapons and which is signed in 1968 and entered into force in 1970. And from then onwards, every five years, there is this uh, review conference. And prior to the review conference, some institutions, as I said, uh, go through this simulation process in order to see what are the likely uh, opinions or views or arguments that can be you know, put forward by other delegations and if and when such and such argument is raised or such and such proposal is made and what kind of counter arguments or proposals uh, to be placed uh, uh, before the other sort of delegations in order to protect the interests of uh, your country. So this is something as I mentioned uh, that is quite serious. Of course we do not have such big ambitions. And, and, and this is not a course on simulation, but uh, because this is something which, uh, based on my personal opinion and observations, I believe is you know, way of better learning and also something that could be fun, provided that you take it seriously. And if you uh, fulfill the requirements of getting prepared for the simulation that will take place at the end of the semester, we can do a really good job and we can enjoy as much as my uh, students uh, in the previous semester, as you will see in a moment from the pictures, uh, have enjoyed. So, but again, before showing some pictures from this simulation session, I just you know, uh, sent to my own email account uh, some six or seven of them. I have dozens of pictures that I took myself during the simulation and I also have some recordings and maybe we can uh, watch them uh, in due course uh, if you have time to do so. Or I can send you as attachments. These are big attachments, by the way. Anyway, so um, here is the point. We are going to simulate uh, what I call an emergency session, which will be called upon a number of countries in the Middle East. This is a course on uh, Middle East security. So. Uh, of course, not all of the Middle East countries, because there are uh, approximately 30 or so countries in the Middle East, and we do not have enough um, number of students or time and space for uh, all of the countries, and not all of them are that significant in the deliberations you know, taking place uh, within the region and also outside of the region with respect to the security situation in the Middle East. A number of countries from the Middle East, plus, of course, uh, including Turkey, Iran, and Israel as non-Arab states, and also uh, a number of other countries who are influential uh, on, of course, the present day past as well as future of the Middle East, such as the United States. Such was the case back in the uh, Cold War years, the Soviet Union, now of course Russia, the Russian Federation, and the European Union. Well, we might think of adding maybe China to the picture, well, we'll, we'll think about it. I, I don't think it would be that necessary. Uh, and Russia and China in some respects uh, show or display pretty much similar attitudes. Of course, there are differences, but they are not a sort of a, that stark difference, that you know, big differences between the two uh, with respect to, for instance, uh, the Iranian nuclear program or Arab-Israeli peace. So therefore, in my opinion, um, Russian uh, sort of uh, position might be necessary and sufficient. So um, let's open this picture because uh, this is one. Maybe we can make it uh, bigger for the whole screen. Well, you see uh, Mr. Secretary General <laughs> sitting here. And uh, this is 
uh, room A130, which I ask from the administration to put in a uh, um, organize this kind of round table or um, discussion. I brought this flags myself, and I borrow from a meter institution. And uh, I think I can still borrow at the end of the semester. And in some of the pictures, you will see some of our students have taken uh, this simulation much more seriously. Uh, sorry, what is this? Where are we? Not this, all right, sorry. I think each time uh, do not, oops. <laughs> <laughs> Iranian delegation, can it be better? Well, these cars were temporarily. <laughs> Remember I uh, told you last time on Tuesday, during this March 2001 simulation, the guy who simulated the Iranian head of delegation was a major from Israeli Defense Force. So, and he, I mean, he performed brilliantly. I mean, and everybody sort of concurred upon uh, this view that he was the master of simulation. He, was, he did a very good job. I believe they are doing this kind of simulation not only in Israel, but in many other institutions, in military institutions, uh, and uh, quite frequently, because the best way to think as to what is likely to come from your opponent or from your enemy is to put yourself in the shoes of your enemy. And this is uh, because uh, there is this sort of a rather hostile relations between Israel and Iran. I believe Israeli officers as well as Iranian officers do simulate each other's sort of country and to try to think in terms of the other side's sort of uh, uh, perspective. And, and therefore, th this is important. But uh, uh, our student uh, has done a great job. And not only by way of appearance as an Iranian delegation or delegate or representative, but his interventions. I'm starting from his prepared statement, which was presented during the first session, but also uh, in his intervention in the following session uh, as a response to others' sort of uh, prepositions or arguments or accusations, and also himself put uh, some proposals. And I know from my sort of discussions, from his consultations with me in my office, with his, of course, uh, delegation members, team members, he was uh, sort of trying to um, kind of develop a, some sort of a pact, some sort of an alliance against pretty much, of course, specifically Israel and the United States. And he uh, discussed some proposals, some issues with other delegations. So it was like uh, a real life situation from his perspective. And everybody said, I mean, uh, all of our students agreed that he performed the best. All right, let's um, see this one. Some pictures for you. Here you go. Uh, Syrian delegation are <laughs> just looking at him. <laughs> He's trying to figure out as to what kind of proposal can I make here just to <laughs> make life difficult. And he's quite a serious diplomat taking notes. And he's, uh, she's a head of delegation here. Again, um, some others like. <laughs> she was from, if I'm not mistaken, uh, University of Santa Cruz, United States. Uh, an American student, exchange student. We have, uh, I think, two or three of them in our class. I wish we had more. And um, as you can see, they, she and her uh, mem team, teammates were representing Iraq. And they did a very good job. All of them did a very good job because of the reason that I will explain in a moment. And what you should do, of course, uh, is do a better job. 
which I believe you can. She was also, well, uh, well American, uh, Turkish origin, I guess, if I'm not mistaken, simulating, representing Turkey. Yeah, Palestine, and she was a real Palestinian. She wanted to represent Palestine. She was, if I'm not mistaken, living in the United States as a uh, Palestine uh, Mahmoude, uh, of Palestinian origin. And I thought it would be a good idea for a Palestinian to have the floor. Well, uh, in, a, in a foreign country, I mean, I would allow this, but for the purpose of this simulation, it is my suggestion and it is up to our exchange students to agree with me. We, you don't have to uh, see this as a, as a condition, but I would prefer uh, our exchange students, as far as I can see, we have three of them. Yes, uh, Amelia and who, who else? Uh, the two are missing, as far as I can see right now, to, to represent Turkey. So in this way, you will have a chance to learn more about Turkey and to uh, take advantage of your rather short stay, a uh, short stay in getting to know Turkey better. Because uh, in the previous uh, simulation, we, we had three students, again, from the United States. And they have done an excellent job. I mean, they knew about Turkey's foreign policy and security sort of policies, etc., uh, much better than anybody. Uh, I, I mean, who would uh, sort of uh, know in the in the class? I mean, they learn a lot in a very short time, and I believe they benefited from this. And because, uh, and this is something that can also be beneficial for our exchange students when they go back and apply for a job, especially. And she, he was also from the United States, uh, simulating Israeli uh, head of delegation. And the last one, as I said, I can send many more if you like. Yeah, that was, uh, I guess, the picture which we saw at the beginning. All right, um, let's have this on the screen to inspire you as much as they can. Um, this simulation session will be a one-shot game. I mean, we will have only one day, and uh, starting uh, on Tuesday at 10:30. Well, two hours may not be sufficient, and we may have an, we may need an extension. And we have this lunch time, so we can extend into not all of your lunch time, but to the extent it is necessary, uh, you, we can use uh, this additional hour. But of course, in order for the simulation to be sort of uh, carried out properly, all of the delegations uh, must be ready and must be up to the point. And uh, it is important. So how will you be getting prepared for it? As I said, you will not be yourselves. You will be somebody else. Simulation requires you to wear the suit of somebody else to put yourself in the shoes of somebody else to not only think but also act like somebody else, not yourself. If you are going to simulate a country other than yours, which will be the case, because as I said, I would like my foreign students to exchange students to simulate Turkey, that will be a very good uh, opportunity for them to learn more about Turkey and benefit from this short stay of theirs. And um, since you will be uh, simulating other countries, unless you have any prior knowledge about these countries' foreign policies, which is not something quite likely as, as far as I can see, so you have to learn about these countries, the country that you will be representing, uh, the foreign policies and security policy of these particular countries. The first thing that you should do, as I said, now you have my email, you receive my email, and I mean, it, it is available everywhere anyway. And I will uh, send you um, a list of countries, and you will send me uh, three choices. First, second, third choices of yours. And I will try to uh, fill in this uh, slots, as I said, like, like uh, Iran, 
Iraq, Syria, Turkey, US, etc. And there will be, as far as I can see, there are now 44, 45 students. And there will be, I think, 11 or so countries to be represented. And I think uh, there will be three or four uh, slots, positions for each country. So when you send me uh, a, you know, uh, your email with three choices, and I strongly recommend you to send me three choices. Because, I mean, if you say, I want to be a member of Syria, and if all of the slots are filled, then I will have no other option but to put you in one of the availables. But if you send me Syria, Iran, and US, or US, etc., then I will check availability and put you uh, in one of these. Well, if you don't have any specific reason uh, to be a member of any specific country, I don't think you should be bothering as to which one you should uh, take on. Because after all, whichever country you pick, you will have to be someone different than who you are right now. So therefore, I don't think it will matter. Some countries, you might think uh, uh, their job will be more difficult. Well, it will be maybe more difficult if that will be an extended simulation, which would extend on to, I don't know, two, three, or four days. Some countries, such as Iran, such as Iraq, US, I mean, influential countries or countries whose names have always been mentioned in respect to uh, the Middle East security issues, then your job might have been more, um, more difficult. But since there will be basically two rounds of discussions, maybe three or two and a half, and in the first round there will be these uh, prepared statements I mean, each delegation will, head of delegation, and you will pick up uh, among yourselves as to who should be the head of delegation. And by the way, the head of delegation will be the person who will make the, uh, uh, the first opening or prepared statement of the delegation. And other delegation members will be expected to speak in the other uh, sessions. So therefore, everyone will get the floor, will have the floor, and therefore, it will not be something where one person per delegation will be acting. All members or each member of, the, uh, of each delegation will be performing, which was the case in this uh, simulation last uh, spring, for instance. And, and the prepared statements should be limited to not more than four or five minutes, uh, considering that we have one full hour and 11 or so delegations, and multiply this by four, so you have only 45 or so minutes. And considering that there will be some intervention, interventions by the uh, Secretary General, who will be uh, acting as Secretary General, I don't know. Is there any volunteer? Is there any person who believes at this moment that uh, he or she will be making a very good Secretary General of the United Nations? Is there anyone among you who sort of uh, runs for this position? All right, think about it. Um, so this four or five minute statement will have to be prepared in such a way that it should reflect the true, the real position of that particular country. It is not going to be your personal statement. You as uh, Bushra or Chala or uh, uh, Ennis or whomever else. No, uh, you will be either uh, I don't know, John or Alexievich or uh, I don't know, uh, Mahmoud Ahmedinejad uh, or someone else. So therefore, these prepared statements will have to be prepared. So are, of course, uh, the other statements. They'll have to prepare according to the true positions of these countries of, in, in, in mention. You cannot just sit and write a statement about a particular country. You, the, the, I mean, you are not representing your own perspective about that country. You will be respect, uh, uh, sort of reflecting the true position of that country. This is something that you need to understand very well. As I said uh, in the previous, not last one, not this one, in the previous simulation, because uh, students who were supposed to simulate Israeli delegation were somehow uh, if not afraid, but 
did not want to go to the Israeli embassy for some reason for consultations and they just refer to some secondary sources, not even primary sources from the internet, they, their sort of uh, statements were not necessarily reflecting the truth. And therefore, uh, we had a lot of reason to, if not smiles or laughs, but we had a lot of smiles during the session. And uh, the, the, the grade coming from that part was not that great. So um, for this purpose, I strongly recommend you to First of all, whenever you make up these teams, to sort of uh, somehow sit and, and, and decide on who is going to do what. Uh, what I call burden sharing. You will share the burden of getting prepared for the simulation because, as I said, it will not be the, the head of delegation who will be sort of uh, speaking there, and also he or she will be sort of responsible for the performance of the team. Each member, I mean, all of the members of the delegations will have to perform. That I can see, that I should, of course, be in a position to uh, give a letter grade or grade somehow. So for this reason, contacting the embassies of the countries that you will be representing is essential. It is essential. Well, this is something that I strongly recommend, but if for some reason, you, you don't go or you fail to go and contact these people or somehow you cannot establish contact because of the attitude of the embassy, well, um, this, is, this may be problematic. But I can tell you so far that even the Israeli embassy, which is uh, pretty much close to such you know, requests from coming from nowhere, but uh, thanks to my sort of... Uh, personal connection with many ambassadors and embassies here because they know us from different sort of circles here and I tell them uh, that my students will come and visit and will ask uh, for documents and also as well as opinions about uh, this specific issue and the subject as I said will be determined I will think about it I will give some more thoughts I believe the subject that we simulated there which was uh, um, an emergency uh, meeting uh, called by the uh, UN Secretary General upon the rumors that he heard or uh, upon the news that reflected that were reflected media that there will be a, or that an attack was imminent on Iran uh, Iranian nuclear facilities he took the floor and, and took the initiative and assembled a meeting where he thought the UN Secretary General uh, thought it would be necessary to discuss with the participation of the countries concerned. So I think the situation still not changed and I think the same subject may be the subject of this simulation as well. I'll think about it and I will let you know most possibly next week. I mean we don't have to rush maybe I can think of a better subject, or if you have any suggestions, and this is something that is also open to your contribution, feel free to suggest as to what should be the subject of simulation, because we cannot have more than one particular subject because we don't have time, and it will be far too difficult for you to get prepared for all the contingencies. So therefore, um, for the purpose of all of the sessions, but primarily uh, for the purpose of the written statement, uh, that will be presented by the heads of uh, de uh, delegations, you need to do uh, an intensive research. This by, uh, given the specific subject, you will try to figure out as to what would be the reaction of that particular country to the subject that will be discussed here. But here comes um, your sort of uh, skills because most of these statements can be very well um, found or somehow you know, assembled, put together from various sources. And in some cases, some embassies may very well give you a, a written document by means of which you can prepare this preliminary statement. And there is nothing wrong with it, so long as this is something that serves you to 
learn things better, fine. It is not plagiarism, it is not you know, cheating, because this is after all something that you get from a source which enables you to use it. But second session uh, will be after this opening remarks, opening statements, either the uh, US Secretary General of the United Nations or one of the, uh, or more of the delegations, they will be making some, uh, or putting on table some proposals. Or they may want uh, the, um, a group of countries or the UN Secretary General himself or herself, we don't know who's going to be the UN Secretary General, uh, to sort of uh, issue a statement by means of which they may wish one or more countries to be accused of doing something or not doing something. So therefore, there will be such debates. And during this session, you will be pretty much on your own. I mean, you will have to be creative. You will have to be reacting the way the real uh, diplomats of these countries would be reacting. Well, it's not an easy thing even for diplomats, trust me. And in most cases, diplomats, before reacting to a proposal, they need, they need to consult these sort of uh, issues with their headquarters, meaning the, their capitals, and these consultations must be done in a very quick manner so as not to uh, lose the floor and give a quick reaction. And if necessary, maybe come up with a counter uh, proposal or something like that. So therefore, I will appreciate that the, your task will not be that easy, but the better you perform here, the better uh, or, or more fun you will get out of this simulation and also, of course, better grades uh, at the end. Well, this third hour, uh, if necessary, we'll see whether it will be necessary. And in most cases, I think it will be, in most likelihood, it will, it will be necessary. And we'll try to cut it short uh, so as not to sort of uh, uh, exhaust you more than necessary. But uh, this session, again, might be a session where uh, some proposals to wrap up a, a statement, a final document, if possible, which is not very likely in an environment like this where you have Israel, Iran, United States, Russia, and some other countries. But, of course, something that we cannot uh, know in advance as to what will come out. So simulation in this uh, manner, again, will be uh, something that you will have to be dealing with throughout the semester. Again, as I said on Tuesday, and something that I need to repeat and maybe uh, give you a more uh, sort of a specific information. Once we make up the themes, once the themes are fixed, the first thing that I will ask from you is to, will be to get together. I mean, whether you meet here in the Mozart Cafe or elsewhere in the cafe break or, or Ankua, wherever, or in dormitory or in classes, the first thing is to get together with all the team members. And in, in some ways, well, it's going to be a little bit of an extra burden for you. It's, in some ways, it's going to be your job, your task, to have your, all of your friends on board at all times. So if one or more of the team members will just um, uh, be deserting you at all times, will not be coming to meetings in consultations or to my office, of course, you should let me know in advance so that, I mean, uh, I can take some measures. Uh, maybe uh, there is uh, some uh, lack of communication. But I will not tolerate any team members to cheat or just uh, to treat others as if he or she doesn't have any responsibility. Each one of you will have equal amount of responsibility. This is uh, therefore for, for sure. And at the beginning, you have to agree upon certain uh, terms, certain conditions as to how to work together. So you will uh, share the burden, and it is up to you as to how to decide on how to share the burden. Then the second thing, I will ask you to uh, fix an appointment with me by way of sending me an email, of course, to be replied by me and to be given a specific uh, appointment on a particular day and time in my office, and each time, unless uh, someone has really a, a serious situation for being absent, serious reason for being absent, I will expect all team members to be in my office at this particular time, and I will do my best to meet with you every two weeks. Maybe it would be better to meet with you every week, but 
I think that might be far too uh, much uh, because I know some of you are taking more than five or six courses. So I don't want to put any additional burden other than necessary. So, and every time you come to my office, we will be discussing how much you progressed and whether there is any problem in communicating with the embassies. And by the way, if you believe just by way of communicating the embassies, that will be it? No. I mean, you will have to make research from various sources. Of course, internet is getting an, uh, every year a much better and more reliable source, but you cannot rely on everything you find in the internet. So therefore, you have to be uh, checking the uh, veracity, reliability of these sources during your uh, discussion with the embassy people and also from other sources. And by the way, um, the sooner you contact the embassies, the better. I know from our experience in the previous and last sort of uh, simulation sessions that some embassy people were either reluctant or quite slow because of their other sort of uh, responsibilities or maybe because there was a message you know, uh, which was lost in, uh, in all these uh, sort of uh, communications which they were not notified on time. So it may be uh, at the very last moment that you, you know, get to know these people and uh, have uh, established an, an, an appointment and it may be a little bit late. So therefore, the sooner you contact embassies and the sooner you make sure your message is, uh, has gone through and expect a, a, a reply. And if you don't get one, you should be insisting. And of course, uh, going to the embassy is not just by way of calling or sending an email. You go to embassies by making an appointment, express yourselves, uh, present yourselves as being students of Pilkent University, which is a way, which is actually a source of uh, prestige, a privilege. Pilkent students, just like professors and the university itself, is a very privileged institution here. So most embassies welcome Milken students for any uh, such request. Again, uh, with respect to this uh, research, um, maybe you should be sort of uh, telling these uh, guys from the embassies whom you will be contacting, uh, if not regularly, but at least one or two times, then uh, that this is going to be a, a serious simulation and the better they, or more they help, the better will be perf the performance of their country. And therefore, uh, some embassies are really anxious. And you know what? Uh, last time, the US embassy people asked from my students to send one of their real diplomats to take part in the simulation. And my students from the American team asked for my per permission. I said no. Because, uh, because that would be quite an imbalanced situation. Uh, all of the other guys are students, and there's one real diplomat sitting <laughs> in his <laughs> sort of a team. Uh, well, maybe next time we should think of inviting uh, for each uh, country uh, uh, sort of a delegation member who might think, who might take the floor at the very last moment to correct, if any, sort of mistakes that might be committed by these students. But anyway, so this is going to be your work. And the better and the, and the more seriously you take it, the be better you will perform. And of course, the much more fun that you will get out of it. So is there any question before we close? And, uh, and one last announcement, because uh, one of your friends asked, is this the only time that we meet here? No. We are going to meet here till the end of the semester. And this course will be taped till the end of the semester. And uh, so that will be a way of checking whether you are attending by way of looking at the, <laughs> the sort of a tape recorded um, uh, tape here. Uh, attendance must have been circulated. Uh, all right, right there. All right, uh, please, quiet. Any questions, the last moment questions? All right, thank you for coming. And I'll see you on Tuesday at 10.30 here.